single turn, I was like, who am I going to interview? Who's it going to? The advantage was just going to be the naturally fastest Pokemon between these 12. And so right away as we get into our first game of this Top Cup match between Terra Birdie and Navjeet Joshi, it is going to be that Landorus Incarnate next to the Regieleki for Navjeet. And for Terra, we do have the Iron Hands and Urshifu. Absolutely love to see the Regieleki on the field already applying a lot of pressure with something like the Electroweb to just do some damage into both these Pokemon and lower their speed straight away. However, the Iron Hands has the utility to go for fake out, slow down the pace on Navjeet's side. Landorus is going to go ahead and run away from this one, sees the Iron Hands and the Urshifu on the other side, and does not want to stick around and find out. But so it's going to be this Orgrippon cornerstone that's going to take its place. Ooh. Unfortunately, it's got to take that fake out. It's got to break the sturdy ability that it has. And with this Volt Switch, at least Navjeet's able to get a bit of a rotation through here and get some damage down to break the Focus Ash on this Urshifu. A big ball position switch here for Navjeet. And like you said, the sturdy's been broken on that cornerstone Orgrippon. That could be very detrimental later in the game. All right now, if Urshifu goes for the Wicked Blow, but it's not enough to be able to get the knockout. Ogopon's going to be able to be here. Landorus does come back into the field here. I feel like it just didn't want to maybe take the potential double up because it is going to be applying a little bit of threatening pressure here. You could always go for that Sunsteer Storm, get a bit of double damage on the field, and that's something Iron Hands will not appreciate. Absolutely not. And it would definitely clean up the Urshifu as yes. well. So a great call there, Lou. Fortunately, we have to see whether or not it's actually going to hit its target to see if it can actually get those knockouts. But as you mentioned, Landorus being there is the absolute fiend versus this iron hand so it's also going to make the pivot out whimsicott a grass type able to take those ground types just a little bit better but it's the ivy cudgel that's going Ooh. to slam into that slot and the stance storm going into the protect for now but will it connect into this whimsicott it does indeed find its mark and able to get the knockout so whimsicott comes in you would think yes it's definitely the better pokemon to take these kind of rock and ground type attacks but no it is down and out yeah Terran winced at that one absolutely yeah. i think hoping that it would be able to withstand the double up there or maybe not expecting the double up to go into that slot now you don't have that tailwind available you don't have the encore either and so it's going to be a little bit difficult for Terran to try to get ahead of things if this Reggie Lucky comes back out for those electro webs. I mean, taking a look here as well at what Taran has in the back, it's all kind of the Electro types. You've got Maridon, you've got Iron Hand, so they're going to be able to resist a lot of what the Regieleki can throw its way, but you have to watch out for those speed tiers. If the Electro webs start coming through, that's where we're going to be dropping the speed and leaving them a little bit more vulnerable for some of Navji's Pokemon to clean up in the back. There is that Calyrex Ice Rider potentially in the fourth and final slot for Navji, and that can deal so much damage, particularly to the Maridon if it is going to be on the field, and there it is. Uh, the Maridon, though, as it enters the field, is going to set up that electric train thanks to the Hadron engine ability. It's going to be boosting up its own attacks as well, but it's not going to do any damage to this Landorus if it is going to try to go for an Electro Drift or a Volt mm. Switch because it is going to be a ground type. So it's going to be a tough call. Do you try to like Terra, go for the Dazzling Glee, but then you're weak to the Sludge Bomb across mm. the way? I would, personally, I would go for the Terra, get the extra damage into Dazzling Gleam, get rid of the Ogre Pond, and do significant damage to Landorus. Yes, you have to worry about the Sludge Bomb, but if Urshifu is able to get the edge on this Landorus and follow up with a Wicked Blow, potentially has the capability to get the knockout, so you don't have to worry about Sludge Bomb at all. It would be nice because the Maraida will pick up the Ogre Pond first, and yes. then you can guarantee that single target damage into the Landorus specifically without something like the Follow Me. But Terran doesn't want to stick around for that one either. Going to reserve that Urshifu for a bit later. Knowing that Iron Hands does have that Assault Vest equipped, so it would be able to take a hit from this Landorus Incarnate just a little bit better. As it hits the field, you do see that this Quirk Drive is going to activate to give this Iron Hands an attack boost. Yeah, it's got the Assault Vest for the defense and the attack boost to be on the offense as well. So a lot of flexibility coming through from this Iron Hands, and that is exactly what Maridon wants by its side. The fake out potential going into this next turn and ensuring that this fairy Maridon is going to be able to deal a huge amount of damage and stay on the field. But Rosemary, it's a terrestrialization apiece. It is a terrestrialization apiece, and that's going to be the Landorus taking on the Terra Poison. One way to get around the Dazzling Gleams is to give yourself this defensive type, but it works both ways because it's also going to be boosting up the power of all of those Poison-type Sludge Bombs. With the Ogre Pond going for the Follow Me as well, it's just to cover 
your bases. That is going to be painful indeed. The Maraidon going for this Dazzling Gleam is going to be able to get the edge onto this Ogre Pond and fell it from play. But because the Iron Hand switched in this turn, it's not going to be able to move either and get damage on the board, enabling this Landorus free reign to go for damage. But it's actually going to go for the Earth Power. I love Ooh. that defensive play, but it's so threatening and intimidating of the Sludge Bomb into this next turn. I guess Iron Hands does have the fake-out potential and Reggie Alecki's now joining the field. So there could be some speed shenanigans going on here. There really can, especially because both of these Pokemon are going to be vulnerable to Reggie Alecki being the fastest one on the field. Mm. So if you wanted to try to get that spread damage down, you could. Iron Hands does have the option to try to go for a fake out here, but I think it's better to save that potentially in combination with something else. Right now, though, it's also going to be Reggie Alecki going for a protect. That is a bit of breathing room here for Terran to work with. I completely agree. And Landorus also going for the protect. With the Iron Hands that was in play, you don't want to have to worry about who's going to take the fake out if you just go for this defensive option. You know the Maraidon is locked in, thanks to the Choice Bex for that Dazzling Gleam as well. Now, going into this next turn, uh, the Reggie Alecki could be in a prime position to go for that Electro Web, lower the speed a little bit more, and maybe allow Landorus to get that KO with the Sludge Bomb following up. But I love what Terran has gone for here. Expecting the double protect on the other side. You can bring this Urshifu in. Try to go for the Sucker Punch. It's not going to be quite oh. enough to actually get the knockout onto this Landorus just yet. So for this Urshifu's troubles, it's going to have to hope that that Sucker Punch damage is enough as it does get knocked out to this Electro Web. But with that minus one speed drop, it's going to mean that this Landorus is also faster now. So the Sludge Bomb into this Terra Fairy oh. Maradon is going to be super effective. The synergy between those two Pokemon on Navji's side, getting the drop, enabling the Landorus to have the edge is a able to get the knockout. And now Taran down to just the Iron Hands in the back, but that's such a difficult spot. It doesn't have a lot of HP, and we also know that, you know, anything coming out from that Landorus, even just the Earth Power, is going to get the knockout. Yeah, and, and especially, like you, I guess you could go for the fake out, but with the sliver of HP, I think it is just all <laughs> that, that is going to happen in this game. So now, Terry gets a chance to take a second. Yes. What happened in the game number one? Reflect. What can you do to move forward into this second game? Because you're not out of it yet. I'm going to be honest, if I was Taran, and you can see he is really taking these seconds to think things through, like you said, Rosemary, I would drop the Whimsicott. Because the Whimsicott, I feel like you need that either early doors to get the Tailwind set up and already get momentum, go on the offensive from the beginning, or it's there to do an offensive role. And it wasn't playing that in this game. It switched in at one point, took double damage, got knocked out, and I feel like you would be more utilized with something on this field that can deal a little bit more damage out there. The Ogre Pond, I maybe. I would say yeah. the Ogre Pond could be nice because you have that support as well with Follow Me. You can deal, you know, some good damage with the Ivy Cudgel into threats like the Reggie Alecki as well. There's a lot of potential here for that supportive role that Whimsicott was failing to provide in this game. And you could do some neutral damage to that Landorus. Yes, that's so true. So that would be very great. I, I love the call out there for the Follow Me as well. Uh, so maybe that is going to be the play. I think Terran did get a bit surprised in how much damage that Whimsicott ended up taking. Yes, that's or true. Or even just the targeting. So maybe, maybe just in a different position could also work there for that Pokemon. I've said this before as well, it's not just about the four Pokemon on the field you've got to face, it's also the player. And sometimes it's not just about reading the board state, it's reading the way the player is playing the game. So Taran may be analyzing how Navjeet was able to play that and seeing how he can adapt accordingly. He does fail the Landorus for good measure, a little bit of redemption there, I suppose, but it does look like the end game is really going to come through to Reggie Alecki, and Navjeet still hasn't even revealed the fourth and final Pokemon in the back. So there's no. a lot of momentum here. Reggie Alecki says, you're not even going to see it anyway. I'm getting the KO, I'm knocking it out, and we're going to game two. Would have been maybe some nice information, though. If Terra was able to get there yes. and actually see that fourth and final Pokemon, gives a little bit of a glimmer into how Navjeet wanted to navigate the end game. Yes. Had it progressed even further. But for this best of three, Navjeet is going to go up 1-0 in this set. One more win for Navjeet means that he gets a chance to move on to the top 16 of the Pokemon World Championships. Top 16. That not only is such an achievement in itself, it also means you unlock that prize money as well. So, so much on the line for both of these players. Taran, you can see, taking that damage, was not happy to see the Whimsicott go down, and that definitely put a thorn in his side for his strategy. I do wonder, too, you know, you talk about the Terra that ended up happening here on the Maraidon, as we see in front of us, but because of that Terra Poison on the Landers, if you expect that that's going to be a big factor in this next game, mm -hmm. did you see the survival of that Cornerstone Ogre Pond from that Wicked Blow? Yes. What if you terra You have Terra Dark on this Pokemon. It would amplify that damage tremendously. I think as well, the Urshifu there, you know, failing to get the KO with the Sucker Punch onto the Landorus as well, could have benefited from that extra boost to the Dark-type. You can understand why Maraidon has it on here. You know, it gives
gives you some nice coverage if potentially that Calyrex Ice Rider was in the back. And I think we can assume that it was. And Taran did have to cover for that for the end game as well as boosting up the Dazzling Gleam. But I think you're right, making sure that Urshifu can get those KOs. And if you keep the speed up, you can remove Reggie Alecki, for example, and allow your Maraidon to shine without the fear of the Electro Web. Then maybe you don't need the Terra on their Maraidon. What if you also bring consider bringing up Winsicott maybe a bit more in the front? I front think you and center, yes. Yeah, you just go for the tailwind right away. I still think that Terran's approach to it in that game number one was okay. If you're able to get a good pivot in there, you do have Pokemon that are able to do that. Baridon with the Fault Switch is definitely one way that you can accomplish that. But I think it has to be done seamlessly. There were a couple hiccups in there mm -hmm. that did make that play just a little bit more easily punished. Well, I think if Terran had been able to get the Whimsicott on, even if it just hangs on by a slither of HP, yes. you know you're clicking Tailwind in that next turn, and that really does swing the momentum. So let's see how Game 2 shakes up between these two players in Masters Top Card at the Pokemon World Championships. Iron Hands and Urshifu on the field for Taran versus the very happy to be here, Reggie Alecki, with Landorus on Navjeet's side. Landorus was so effective for Navjeet in that very first game that it's no wonder why it is going to be brought as a lead front and center for this game number two. Next to this Reggie Alecki as well, you have the opportunity, if you see the right things in front of you, once again, go for those Electro Webs. You can still do a ton of damage to this Urshifu as well. We saw that Thunderbolt actually do about two-thirds damage to that Urshifu. It did a significant chunk, even though it is um, the single strike variant. But Reggie Alecki getting out of here does not want to have to take the potential fake out on a follow-up. It is a very fast and offensive Pokemon, but a little frail, and you don't want to have to take a wicked blow. Iron Hands is going for the fake out, though, but to no avail. There is the Armatail Frigoraph on the field here, so it cannot find its mark, and Lander is free to Sansa's Storm all day long. Oh, and if it wasn't for that Focus Sash here, you know, this Urshifu would definitely be hanging on. Naturally is able to do that, but at the very least, you do get this damage down mm -hmm. into this Furgraph. You get the KO. So big deal here that you remove that armor tail from play, but to what cost? That's the thing. You do take a little bit of damage, but I think the key thing was you catch it on. At least you brought it down a Pokemon early doors. You now have the Calyrex coming in here. You can apply some pressure. If you are that kind of faster Urshifu as well, having the flexibility to shake things up, you can always go for the close combat down into that slot. Having a look at what the Calyrex it is running, the Water Terra type, that would be a nice defensive play for it at this point in hand. But then you have to watch out for the Iron Hands. That could go for something like, oh, actually, it's not even running an electric type move. So forgive me, the Water Terra, maybe not beneficial to Calyrex at all. No, the low kick, though, a really nice adjustment here on the Iron Hands to deal with something like the Ice Rider Calyrex mm -hmm. or any of these other uh, heavier Pokemon. But the fact that you're not able to land that fake out in the landers and you've taken so much damage now, the trade is huge. Yes. Now this Ice Rider Calyrex gets a chance to come in for free. Your Urshifu is on its last legs of life. And Terran's going to have to figure out what you can do in the back. The Sucker Punch, though, is good. It's mm -hmm. still going to do about half damage here. But you're taking another Sansia Storm, which just gets a double knock out onto the Iron Hands of the Urshifu. Nafti is starting to run away with this game. Yeah, Taran does not look happy at that play at all. You could see the seconds were turning down as well, so maybe it was just a little bit of a hesitation in what moves he decided to lock in, and Calyrex actually just being given the free reign to go for a Trick Room here. I was almost going to say it's kind of sad that Calyrex didn't get the double KO there for the two chilling neighbors, but actually it doesn't need that. It's got the Trick Room up, and when you see what Taran has in the back, this is going to be a Calyrex Glacial Lands party out here. It is, I mean, absolutely devastating for these two Pokemon. The Glacial Lance is going to be so effective. And the fact that this Ice Burner Calyrex has also set up the Trick Room, it is going to end up being the fastest thing on the field. No more Tailwind to really help to control these speeds here for the Maridon, but there is maybe one hope. Lou, you were pointing at it. Let's talk about it. There is Encore available on this Whimsicott. That's the only way to kind of reverse the Trick Room at this point, Encore down into it, but then you cannot underestimate the Slander. Landorus can go for something like the Sludge Bomb and get some good damage onto the opposing Whimsicott. You could also go for the Earth Power or even the Sansis Storm and do damage to the opposing Maridon. I think it's wise to switch out the Calyrex here as well because then you know you cannot be encored here. Trick Room is going to stay up and I've never really seen a Reggie Alecki come into a Trick Room environment before, but the key thing was to keep Trick Room up because if Reggie Alecki goes down, that's actually nice for Navji. You then have the free switch to bring that Calyrex back in where it doesn't have to worry about encore potential. Yeah, that is the big value from this Reggie Alecki is absolutely just get this Ice Rider Calyrex out of there knowing that it's just used the Trick Room. And it might just be a sacrifice of this Reggie Alecki because I don't think Navjeet thinks we are going to get past these Trick Room turns mm -hmm. right now. It's going to be a terrestrialization on both sides as we see the Landorus take the Terra Poison and the Maridon take the Terra Fairy. This is a familiar place that we've seen before, but the Encore into the Landorus does mean that it's going to get locked into what it used the turn prior. Sansier Storm coming back out into both. Maridon is 
is able to hang on thanks to terrestrializing away from that electric typing, but it does have to take a critical hit. The critical hit's really unfortunate because that was a nice play by Tara, not falling for the Uncle Bait into the Trick Room, instead stopping a Sludge Bomb from coming out, which was critical considering you've got two Fairy types on the field. The issue, however, Reggie Alecki is hanging on. That Landorus is still in the position to go for an Alessandro Storm. It's not going to be able to get the KO on Whimsicott, but thanks to the crit before, Maridon is in the danger zone. Right on is in the danger zone. This light screen, kind of like the last saving grace here. <laughs> One of the nice tech moves from the Whimsicott nowadays, just to be able to help this bolster up big. the special oh. defenses, but it's just not enough to allow this Maridon to hang on. It is all down to this Whimsicott in the face of this Reggie Alecki, and Navji is just one knockout away from being able to move on to the top 16 of the Pokemon World Championships. Reggie Alecki just going for the Electro Web, finding his mark on that Whimsicott, not enough to be able to clean out this set quite yet. I think that is going to be Land moment here. Oh no, Taran saying, nope, Landorus, you've had enough. Go back to your Pokeball. I'm conceding this game. And Navji Yoshi is going to be advancing into top 16 at the Pokemon World Championships. Wow, what a display. The Reggie Alecki, one of the most unique choices that we see 